Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Penguin Classics on Air. I'm Stephen Morrison, the editor-in-chief of Penguin Books, and this week we'll be talking about two of England's most well-known classic authors, Jane Austen and Elizabeth Gaskell. With all new adaptations of Austen's Emma and Elizabeth Gaskell's Cranford now airing on PBS Masterpiece Classic, we wanted to talk with two experts on Austen and Gaskell to discuss the importance of each author's works, late 18th century Britain in the case of Austen, and about Britain during the Industrial Revolution in the case of Gaskell, and why both authors' works are so often adapted. Now, first up, we'll be speaking with Sue Bertwistle, the award-winning producer and writer whose previous productions have included the much-loved 1995 adaptation of Austen's Pride and Prejudice, starring Colin Firth, and the 1996 adaptation of Austen's Emma, starring Kate Beckinsale, as well as the 1999 four-part adaptation of Elizabeth Gaskell's unfinished last novel, Wives and Daughters, and the 2007 adaptation of Gaskell's Cranford and Return to Cranford. Well, hello there, Sue. It's a pleasure that you could be with us here today. Thank you. We're going to delve into deeper territory here and talk more, actually a little bit, sort of comparing Jane Austen and Elizabeth Gaskell. Since you've produced both of their works, and I think in one case you've actually done the, the adaptation, is that correct? Uh, well, on on the two Cranfords, uh, with Susie Conklin, I did the uh, storylines. We actually uh, took the material, the Gaskell material, um, which is not only Cranford, it, it's two other novels in the first uh, series, and on this time it's part of Cranford and yet another novel in a story. So we do the process of actually interweaving the books so the stories are completely uh, meshed into each other. Uh, and then Heidi Thomas, the writer, comes on and we work together and she, she writes the scripts then. Um, so it's it's sort of creating the... It becomes an original drama, actually, although it's it's Gaskell's novels because they're put together in a way that nobody's ever seen them before, so nobody knows what's going to happen in them, which is part of the attraction, I have to say. <laughs> well, it seems like with the Cranford novel characters and the series, the sort of foundational uh, you know parts of the, of the piece of the characters themselves i mean i guess with cranford i my i have not read cranford but we, we compared to gaskell's other novels it's not highly plotted her other books are very highly plotted what is particular about cranford is that she she wrote it as individual stories in fact she was commissioned by charles dickens to write a story for his magazine called Household Words, and she she wrote one, and it, he liked it a lot, and it was very popular. So he asked her to write another, and then another, and then another. And she famously said that if she'd known she was going to write more, she wouldn't have killed off one of her characters in the first story, <laughs> <laughs> which is something that we found actually, because uh, when we came to do second series, we said, "Why did we kill off those characters?" Wait, we need a villain in Gaskell's, yeah, yeah. or in ours. Oh, I- <laughs> Okay, so so you yeah. kept them alive in your series? Uh, no, we killed <laughs> we killed we kept the one that she killed off alive, strangely, but because she said, and we felt we had her blessing to do this, she said I wouldn't have. It was Captain Brown. We kept him alive, but okay. she killed him off. But she said I regretted very much killing him off. He would have been very very useful. <laughs> so we we counted that as permission to keep him alive. But we did kill off some others that we slightly regretted. Mister Carter. Uh, for instance. But we've got lots of new characters. Uh, But I think that's why it's different. It's it's a series of stories about about a town, about the people of a town. So it's a lot of characters rather than a few characters with one story going through. Some of her work is referred to as sort of the industrial novel. Or What's interesting with Cranford is actually not a huge amount of all the changes of that time period in England in the in the middle of the 19th century are, seem to really affect the village. No, I think that's that's the point of it. That her mother died when she was a baby, and she was sent from London to this northern rural small town uh, by these two aunts. But she, when she was 21, she she left and went to Manchester and married a, a Unitarian minister. So she was absolutely in the heart of the Industrial Revolution, and she did a huge amount of work in the factories with the the women and the children who had to work there. And she came to write Cranford because she she wrote a book, one of her books about 
the Industrial Revolution, and uh, and it was about a, a woman who was forced into prostitution because she couldn't afford to live and feed her children. And it was so shocking that her husband's congregation burnt the novel. So she was very, very bruised by that. Was this and, Mary Barton? Yeah. yeah it was, yes. okay. Yeah. In her head, she decided she would go back to the time when she was a child growing up in, in Knotsford, in Cranford, and write about what she remembered of the people there, because she said very soon nobody will believe how people lived and, mm. and what mm-hmm. happened in those places. Another generation, and it will be forgotten. So she she went back to her to her childhood in this place and wrote about that. And in fact, she said it's the the end of her life. She said it's the only one of her novels that she would reread often. And she said, I can't say it's for pleasure because it's immodest to say that, but it was um, it was like visiting a favorite child again. And um, it was the only one that she would regularly reread. And yet she had such another strong side of herself. It was very sort of socially and politically active. All, her, all of her other novels are very, um, you know, concerned with what, issues of class and yes. the role of women, etc. Yes, absolutely. Mind you, I don't think Crumford's unconcerned with class. Yeah, I mean, yeah. she does go, yes, yeah, she yeah. has the range of, uh, of what is the society in that, that small place, right from Lady Ludlow to the poacher's son, Harry Gregson, um, and interweaves those lives. Uh, but certainly she was absolutely at the heart of the Industrial Revolution and, and worked very hard in it. She was very, very conscious. Um, but actually a lot of her, she wrote hundreds and hundreds, literally hundreds of short stories, which a lot of those are to do with rural communities. She uses the same characters quite a lot again and again. Uh, and that's why we were able to find our material um, because the, the the Judy Dench part and the Eileen Atkins part, those two aunts who sort mm. of brought her yeah. up, she she revisits those and reuses those again and again and again.